This CNN podcast is brought to you by Johnson & Johnson. At Johnson & Johnson, we believe nursing is the essence of caring. It's very difficult to explain to people how remote it is here on the Caribbean coast of Nicaragua. It's, it's very remote. There are no roads essentially anywhere, so all transportation is by boat. In these isolated communities, only the wealthiest people have generators. Most people in the community will never have access to that power source. My name is Matthias Craig, and I work to bring sustainable energy services to isolated communities. My brother Guillaume and our mother Colette have been coming down to Nicaragua for over 20 years. Our mother started working here in 1984 as a linguist, working with some of the Indians here on the coast, the Brahma Indians, documenting their language. So we used to travel here when we were young and just sort of developed a bond with the region. And they have a, a serious energy problem here. Only about 20% of the coast um, has access to electricity. So it's sort of a natural place to do a project like this, an electrification project. We're really based around the wind turbine, the wind generator, which is it's a generator that sits up on a tower. It has blades that catch the wind. As the wind strikes it, it turns the blades, much like a fan working in reverse. When the wind comes, it spins the blades. Those blades are just spinning a generator, which produces electricity at the top of the tower, comes down in a transmission line. And then we have a power system with batteries where we just we store the energy produced by the windmill. And we also use solar panels, which just convert direct sunlight into electricity. We use those two generation technologies to charge our batteries. And then on the, on the back end, when you want to use electricity, you can either use electricity directly from the batteries using certain kinds of appliances, DC appliances, direct current, or you use an inverter to invert the battery power to alternating current. And alternating current, AC power, is what most people are used to in the developed world. It, it's what you have coming out of an electricity socket in your house. We have an amazing team. My brother Guillaume, being the one that's here every day, dealing with realities of the difficulty of working here, coordinating large teams, doing these, these big trips out into the communities, coordinating all of that and just making all of this a reality. All the volunteers, a lot of them, you know, have foregone lucrative careers in engineering or in business or in lots of, lots of areas to come here and work with us for a year. Some have come for two years. That in and of itself is a big sacrifice. And now it's reached the point where we've had, I don't know the numbers exactly, but somewhere between 50 and 100 volunteers come through our doors in the last three years. There's no water up here. All the sand, all the rock, all the concrete, everything had to be hauled up that hill. So we've got, what, six meters of sand and six meters of rock just in our bases. 320, 330 buckets of rock and 320 buckets of sand. It's going to be good when we raise it. Our interest is in delivering sustainable energy services. So we wanted to build our systems from scratch here and train local people here through the process of building that people would learn how to service them. Beautiful. It has a tremendous impact. When it gets dark, it gets very dark around 6 o'clock. So by extending the hours of the day a little bit in the morning and a little bit in the afternoon, evening, um, allows them to be to, it's to engage in other productive activities they wouldn't otherwise be able to do. There are also some serious health benefits. Um, the most common form of light is a, a diesel fuel lamp, which they burn in the home, which is very polluting, uh, especially damaging for children and women who spend most of their time in the house. So replacing those lights with clean electric lights will have a major impact on public health. And then also just education, expanding 
access to education. Uh, the kids use the school during the day. In most of these communities, they've expressed interest in having adult classes at night. A uh, vast majority of the adults are illiterate. Um, so those classes would have to happen in the evening because they work all day long. It could be power for the health center, for refrigerating vaccinations. Any path they choose pretty much requires electricity and clean water. So by providing one of those basic services, you're opening up basically a whole new world of opportunities